Joining us now are two students who survived this massacre inside the school. We have Kelsey Friend, she's a freshman, and we have David Hogg, he is a senior. Guys, I know you've had um, a trauma and a horrible night and day. Thank you very much for being here because you each have such unique stories. Kelsey, I want to start with you. You're a freshman. You were in your geography class. Uh, well, actually, the, the, you were in your geography class until the alarm was pulled, a fire alarm, and you went out as if to file out and evacuate for the fire alarm, and then what happened? Uh, everybody stopped moving. No one was going down the stairs. Everybody was just looking around like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, like, it was like a, like a wave of kids running back upstairs, screaming. Some were already saying, crying. Some were saying, oh my goodness. Had you heard the gunshots at that point? No, I did not. But people said there's gunshots downstairs. And I'm like, I'm, I talked to my teacher and I said, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. And then we heard the gunshots. And then you turned around and you went back to your geography classroom. Yes. And then what happened? My geography teacher unlocked the door and I had ran in thinking he was behind me, but he was not. What happened to your teacher? He unfortunately passed away in the doorway of our classroom. Did you see him get shot? I did not. I, I heard the gunshots and I've heard the shooter walk down the hallway shooting more kids. I've heard a, uh, a young man crying for his mother dying. And it was just hard because you don't imagine this happening to you. You see it on the news, you see it everywhere, and you, you don't think it, this is not good. You think it's not gonna happen to you, but until it happens, you're just like, this is, this is terrible. Kelsey, it's unthinkable. It's unthinkable that you would have to he hear your geography teacher be killed basically in front of your eyes and hear another student struggling for his life. Were you aware that your, did you see your, your teacher be killed or were you aware that he had been killed? Um, when we were all um, piled up by his desk, that's because that was the procedure for Code Reds to hide and to do anything possible to keep us safe. We, my friend said, Mr. Beagle, which is his name, is not moving. He is laying in the doorway and he is not moving. She said, I don't know if this is real or fake because we had rumors going around the school that the police would do a fake code red with fake armed gun, uh, fake guns, not actual, but sounding real. And I thought at the beginning that this was just, it was all a drill, it was just a drill until I saw my teacher dead on the floor. And you were hiding on the other side of his desk? I was actually hiding in front of his desk. How do you think it's possible that the shooter didn't come in? I believe that my teacher, the reason why he was laying in the doorway is because he protected us. And so the shooter must probably thought like, there's no kids in there because he, he was, you know, the classroom was empty, it looked empty. So I thought, I believe that the shooter didn't think there was any students in there, but there was probably like five, uh, 15 to 20 kids in there with me. All huddled in front of his desk. Uh, somewhere behind it, behind somewhere in front of it. And how long did you stay like that? If I'm going to be honest, it felt like five years, more than that. I was, I was just so scared. I, I wanted to go home. I wanted the cops, because my grandfather is a former state trooper, to be there and get me home safely so I can see my family again. The first thing that came to mind was my mother. What did you think? Um, what, what is my mom gonna do without me? I'm her, I'm her stone. I'm her, first, I'm her first kid and I'm the first of the family. What are they, what are they they're gonna miss me. I can't, I can't leave them. Kelsey, you shouldn't have to be the rock as a freshman for your family because there's a hideous school shooting. You shouldn't have to see your teacher be killed. When did you realize it was safe to come out? Uh, the SWAT team actually came and got us and said it was all okay. Once we were escorted out of the classroom, I did see Mr. Beagle's body on the corner of my eyes near the stairwell and I did see blood and I saw two students, unfortunately, curled up in balls going down the stairs, I saw more blood, backpacks thrown everywhere. It was like a movie scene. Uh, there was gunpowder all over the floor. You don't, it, it was just so 
real, but it felt so fake at the same time. And I couldn't comprehend it until I just started screaming. Of course it did. It's impossible for a 14-year-old mind or any mind to get around what you all endured in there and what you had to see. Our brains are not built to have to see this. Of course it goes into, this must be fake. This must be a movie. So David, tell me your experience. You were, as I understand, you were in your AP environmental science class. So this all happened in the freshman wing. Yep. You're a senior. What did you hear and see? So my AP environmental science class is about 200 to 100 ish feet away from the freshman building where this atrocity occurred. And our door was our door was actually opened ajar, and we heard the first gunshot. And my friends in the front uh, of the room looked around, and we were like, "We think we heard a gunshot, Mr. Really, our teacher." And she she promptly closed the door. But immediately after she closed the door, what this sick person did is he pulled the fire alarm. He pulled the fire alarm to get all of the people out of the rooms, and we were part of that. We started walking out without even thinking about it twice. And as a result, when we were walking out to our, our designated fire zone, there was a flood of people running in the opposite direction, telling us to go the other way. So I start running with the herd. And as we're running with the herd, we actually were running towards the freshman building. And thank God for a janitor that stopped us. What did the janitor say? The janitor said, guys, you, you, like, you can't go this way, go, go this way. And they funneled us all in Chef Kurth's culinary cooking classroom, about like 40 students, I'd say, if not more. And because of those heroic actions and the actions that she took, just a split second decision in 30 seconds, she saved my life and she saved easily 40 others there. Because you were running towards the gunman unknowingly. Exactly. And then the janitor turned you around and you were able to go and hide. Yes. In a matter of 30 seconds, we were in there locked down in a way. Due to her heroic actions, I'm pretty sure that's why I'm alive today. And meanwhile, your sister is a freshman. Yep. So your sister was in the freshman wing along with Kelsey. What was happening? Well, I was extremely concerned for my sister, but we actually thought this was a, dr this was a drill at first, and a an extremely realistic one at that. And I, in part, thought that because of the extremely well-executed response of the janitor and everybody else. But while we were in there, we soon found out this was anything but a drill. Th this was life or death. And how did you find that out from? Uh, Our phones. We were phones. looking it up. Sadly, my sister, had. she's a freshman, and she had two of her best friends die. And that's not acceptable. That is something that we should not let happen in this country, especially when we're going to school. It's something that we really need to take a look at. The fact that this is the 18th school shooting, and this is only February, is a testament to where this country has come and how far we need to, we need to dig out of this hole. We need to step out of it and take a look back and realize there's something seriously wrong here. And some of our policymakers and some people need to look in, they need to look in the mirror and take some action because ideas are great. But without action, ideas stay ideas and children die. You obviously come at this from a different perspective. You're the news director of your student at TV news station. Yeah. And so you've been thinking about these things. You've been reporting on these things. And even in the heat of the moment, you had the presence of mind to start taping some yeah. of this and asking people questions because, so, uh, you, you know, that's how you think as yeah. a journalist. So the reasoning behind that was that, honestly, I... I started to, when you're in these situations, you can't really think of anything. You're kind of just frozen there, kind of like in a lukewarm state. Anyways, um, I was really thinking about what, have, what has my impact been? What, it, what have any of our impacts been? Uh, like, and I realized I hadn't really had one. I, I thought to myself, if I die today, I want my impact to be, if I die, I want to tell a good story. I want to show these people exactly what's going on when these children are facing bullets flying through classrooms and students are dying trying to get an education. That's not okay, that's not acceptable, and we need to fix that. You did tape record some of this. It's so graphic, <clears throat> we can't play it right now. It's just so graphic, we have to do some editing yeah. around it. But when I think about what you all saw in there and what you had to live through, um, do you have a message for the lawmakers? Do you have a message yes. for Congress, for the president? Yeah. My message to lawmakers in Congress is please take action. Ideas are great. Ideas are wonderful and they help you get reelected and everything. But what's more important is actual action and pertinent action that results in saving thousands of children's lives. Please take action. Do you have a sense of what kind of action that would be? Any, any action at this point, instead of just complete stagnancy and blaming the other side of the political aisle, would be an, a step in the right direction. And working together to save these children's lives is what this country needs. What's your message, Kelsey? I'm just thankful for Broward County and how they 
have these drills for us. If I didn't have these drills, I probably would have ran towards the shooter and not away from it. I probably would have ran away from it because I know it's a gun, but I probably wouldn't have known what to do because I've never been in a situation like this. And quite frankly, I hope no child has to go through this again because this is the thing that you think will never happen till it does. And it's terrifying. I will never forget what and, happened to me yesterday. And people are gonna keep saying, oh, this is just another shooting. It's never gonna happen to me. But what happens is when you don't take action, things like this eventually will happen to you. And that's not acceptable. And that's why I call on people to stand up, talk to the congressman, talk to people, and don't stop fighting because children will continue to die if we don't take a stand now. Kelsey, can you tell us about Mr. Beagle, your geography teacher? Mr. Beagle was my hero and he still will forever be my hero. I will never forget the actions that he took for me and for fellow students in the classroom. And if his family is watching this, please know that your son or your brother was an amazing person and I am alive today because of him. Thank you for bringing and having this amazing person in life and giving him the power to be stronger than I could have ever been. He will be missed by me and multiple friends. His name for with me will live on and I'll make sure of it. And you're sure that you feel certain that he saved your life? I'm 100% certain. I, if I could see him right now, and, and if he was still here and he got out of the hospital, I was talking to my mom and I'd get him a huge teddy bear to say thank you, but unfortunately I can't do that. And I, I will not let this shooting go down as another one because people are not understanding. This is not gonna stop. Just like he was saying, it's not gonna stop until something happens. Ideas are great, but we need action. Listen, exactly. there, something has gone terribly wrong when all of us adults are looking to you 14 and 18 year olds for wisdom and to help us figure out how to solve this. But that's where we are today. And so Kelsey, I don't understand. How are you as a freshman gonna move on? What's gonna happen when you go back to school? I don't know, but hopefully I can push through and make the remainder of this year worth it. Because freshman year is supposed to be fun and exciting, but unfortunately us freshmen this year in sophomores had to go through this. And seniors and juniors, everybody had to go through this, teachers. Some, I believe this was Mr. Beagle's first year in school, at this school, and he is no longer going to be teaching here because of this insane man. Are you going to be able to go back into this building behind us? Yes. I'm not going to let this person stop me. That's what they want to do. They want to scare us. They want to make us feel unsafe. And I say no. I, am going, I take a stance on my personal, in my own personal way to say that's not okay. I don't feel afraid. I'm going to continue learning so I can prevent this from happening again. And that's what you guys as journalists are doing as well. And the, and the fact that you're reporting on this says so much. But what we really need is action. Because we can say, yes, we're going to do all these things, thoughts and prayers. What we need more than that is action. Please. This is the 18th one this year. That's unacceptable. We're children. You guys are, like, are the adults. You need to take some action and play a role. Work together, come over your politics, and get something done. David Hogg, Kelsey Friend, we're so sorry for your loss. We're so sorry that you had to endure all of this. Thank you very much for telling us the story of your wonderful teacher and Thank everything. Thank you for letting me share it. I'd do anything to keep his name alive. You did that. Thank you both very much. Take care of yourselves.